This week is more depressing news, so welcome to the Gamers 2 Depressing Podcast. It's only downhill, never up. That's true. He's Matt. Happiness is a lie. I'm Nate. Life is pain. Then you die. Put it on a shirt. Welcome to the Gamers 2 Podcast, your weekly roundup of exhilarating, exciting, and uplifting news about the video game industry <laughs> and anything else that might pique our interests. We need the, uh, you know, the screaming cat meme. I don't know if you know which one I'm talking about. It's like a cat in a living room that's just howling, and it's just a still image of it. And it's usually captioned, like, why is it depressing or something, and then it's looking at something else, or like, why is my brain, blah, blah, blah. It's just that. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, oh well, my bad. Maybe. I mean, it's not ringing a bell. Uh, I could probably find it on somebody's page fast enough, but I don't have it on mine, so. Rip for the joke. Good reference me. <laughs> Nailed it. That's life. Just depression, failure, and then it ends. Get out of get out <laughs> I have ADHD to the nth degree, so why don't we talk about new releases? New release video games. Like, number one, I... (sighs) Anemiaopolis. You nailed it. Anemiaopolis and (laughs) Anemi... Enema. Ch- 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 it's not enema. <laughs> Chapter one for the PC. Number two, Dead Side Club for the PC. Number three, Destiny 2 Life Hall. More Destiny. Yay. Yay. Number four, Dungeons of Aether for the PC. Number five, Fern Bus Coach Simulator for the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Fern Bus is one word there. Coach Simulator. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Coach being buses, maybe? That's what I, like, thought, but... I don't know. Who knows how accurate that is. Number six, Ritmos for the PC and Switch. Number seven, Scars Above for the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number eight, King of the Castle for the PC. King of the Castle, King of the Castle. The Borat reference. Um, Surprisingly... Never watched it. You've never watched Borat? Nope. Wow. That being said, I don't think you would enjoy it. I think it was a thing of the time, and if you watched it any time not in the hype with everybody else, it's not enjoyable. Yeah, we had a conversation uh, similar to that uh, fact about Zoolander and um, Tropic Thunder. To where they might not have aged super well. Like, if you rewatch them now, it might be like, oh, I don't know. Tropic Thunder, I don't think it was ever like... Well, he has a lot of funny moments and whatever, but I don't think it was ever, unless maybe I missed, I because I don't ever pay attention to Hollywood, but I don't think it was ever, like, gangbusters, was it? I don't know. I, I Zoolander, really I know, it. did gangbusters. I like Tropic Thunder way more than Zoolander. Interesting. I think, I think Tropic Thunder is more quotable. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Zoolander's, well, Zoolander's base premise is that the, he's an idiot. Tropic, well, that's kind of Tropic Thunder, too. Tropic Thunder But it is, has a lot more characters. Yeah, I feel can, like tro- Tropic Thunder is almost like fan service. Like, after, there's three characters in, in Zoolander. Yep. There's seven in, in Tropic Thunder that are, like, actually notable. Yep. Did you see, speaking of Tropic Thunder, I'm not even through the video game list and we're tangenting. Did you see the clip that somebody put together Mario of Mario and Luigi. Did I send that to you guys? Uh, I don't know, but I saw it of Mario uh, and Luigi as Christian Bale and Matthew McConaughey. Yep, when they're having to do the phone call back, yep. and it's Bowser Jr. on the other yeah. end. He's like, "Just take a step back and fuck your face." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it's so good. Uh, they were at one point there in the works was a spinoff movie with of uh, what was his name? I can't remember now, but Tom Cruise's character there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's also one of those now where, pardon the dead air while I took a drink. Um, It's one of those now where you'd have to watch it and 
try to forget that Robert Donner Jr. became Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's before that, so you're kind of like, oh, it's just whatever, he's doing a bunch of random things. But if you watched it now, you'd be like, how did he, after Iron Man, do that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he did all this after he did all the drugs. That's true, yeah. One hell of a comeback. Number nine, Meg's Monster. For the PC, Xbox, and Switch. Number 10, one military camp. I wish that was... I like that it's one military camp, but I wish it was like one colon military camp, and then it was just a Metallica game. (laughs) (laughs) Number 11, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. For the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. What's the the deal with that one? Wolong? Yeah. Is that that good? Fallen Dynasty. It is. That one was semi hyped. About I haven't heard shit, so Yeah, same. That's what I'm kinda like. I'm, one, I'm wondering if it's gonna be one of those like it's out and then about three weeks from now we'll hear everybody going, Yo, Wolong's pretty good. Or it'll never happen. Yeah, or it'll just it'll just fade fizzle. away yeah. and uh It's on Game Pass. Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. So if you're not sure about how long you can uh grab it on the Game Pass for Usually one dollar for the promo code. One dollar hair. Uh, I have to cancel my Game Pass subscription because I always get it. <laughs> th- th- month three, by the way, of him forgetting. <laughs> yep, I always get it with the anticipation of being like, oh, "I'm gonna play this game," and then I never fucking do, and then it sits there, and I just am giving Microsoft money for nothing. I'm paying for Activision Blizzard right now and getting nothing in return. Just like the idea. You could at least give like me a handy, that, Phil Spencer. I like the idea that you go back to Microsoft. You heard over there? I heard a smoke alarm. You're just having flashbacks. No, I heard it. Now it's gonna bug me which one's beeping. I could have sworn my bat- my battery change wasn't this month. Oh, it's gonna bug me. You wanna hear something great? I don't know. I, I don't have a single smoke alarm in my house. <laughs> kind of fucked up, right? I mean, yeah, a little, <laughs> bit, a little bit. What do you think about it? <laughs> anyway, uh, odds are on you. And I'll, oh, fi- well. I'll figure this out while we do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I don't, I don't know why I'm holding on to this. It's on a stand. Well, it makes you feel good. You know? Does it? I don't know. You like having something around the thick in your hand. <laughs> Number one. Yep. I'm putting we're still no, I'm doing putting updates. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm we're doubling, done. I'm doubling down. <laughs> I'm going to put two hands on it. <laughs> we're still doing updates on this. Because I'll never know what this feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Neither will she. Uh, I miss her so. Uh, <laughs> Borat reference. <laughs> we're still doing updates on the Microsoft Activision Blizzard bullshit. God, unfortunately, Matt hasn't paid enough Game Pass tokens to just end this. Uh, We got some movement on the legal front. The FTC granted two of Sony's requests, but denied the other six. Uh, This is referring to the subpoenas Microsoft made of Sony and their little dispute. Uh, Here we go. Uh, Request to withhold content licensing agreements. Denied in part. Sony made uh, Sony doesn't have to disclose any agreements made before January 1st, 2019. I already drank that entire thing. You thirsty boy. <laughs> That's a fucking leader. <laughs> a leader of pure, Drugs, pure energy. Cocaine. Uh, request to withhold employee performance reviews in evaluations. Granted. Uh, this was specifically referring to Jim Ryan and other top execs at Sony. Do you want me to explain any of these? No. Which I know you don't. Not really. Uh, I can tell you. <laughs> Not really. Cause at this point, I'm kind of over the whole thing. <laughs> Request to deny access to Jim Ryan's declaration to the FTC. Denied. (laughs) Request to limit time period of search. Granted. That goes back to the 2019 thing. Um, Microsoft requested info going all the way back to 2012. And Sony's like, not relevant. And the judge was like, you know what? You're right. 2019 is all you got. Back to 2019 is all you get. Um, Request to limit the scope of the custodial search. Denied. 
I just, you know, what I picture, you know what I'm picturing, giant rubber stamp. Oh yeah, did not, did not. Uh, request to exclude Lin Tao and Hideki Nishino as custodians. Denied. Uh, Lin Tao is Sony Interactive Entertainment's senior vice president of finance, corporate development, and strategy. He, I bet he makes fucking bank. Got Probably. three things in his title. Uh, Hideki Nishino. Not one of them, though, is a C-suite. That's true. Hideki Nishino is senior vice president. I'm assuming that's supposed to say vice president, not senior video president. But I'm assume, not sure. I would assume so. Of global product strategy and management. Um, request to exclude in-house antitrust lawyer Greg McCurdy as custodian denied. The request to limit the definitions of the subpoena denied. So we're not going into details on these, but some of these are actually pretty like genuinely hilarious because Sony was just like literally grabbed a big pile of shit out of their pants and threw it at the wall. They, they, and the FTC's like, is that literally shit on the wall? What do you want us to do with that? And Microsoft's looking at the judge like, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with them. Anyways. I don't know why they're just throwing their shit around. <laughs> I just asked to see them, though. <laughs> they started throwing shit. I don't know why they started throwing shit. I just wanted to see their butthole. Yeah, I, just, I, don't, I don't even think it's that deep. I think it's closer to, like, I asked them if their hands were clean, and they threw shit on the wall. And I don't understand how those two things go together. <laughs> uh, and it also, if this is not just, like, gloriously... and I mean, obviously, Microsoft knows they're going to look over everything. But, yeah. hey, d- it, it, there's no way Sony's smart enough to play smoke and mirrors with this, right? Where they specifically go, we don't want you looking at Lindau. <laughs> or... <laughs> Or Hideki Nishino. Don't look at them. <laughs> and they're like, no, go ahead and do that. And then I, I, I'm i half wondering if Sony's attempting a double bluff. Where they're like, no, don't look at them. And they're like, ah, they want us to look somewhere else. Because it's actually not them. It's somebody else. And they're playing the old Smoke and Mirrors game. I wish- and then they actually go, you know what, look all their bluff. Let's look at it. And you just watch Sony's lawyers go, oh, god damn it, no. <laughs> I kind of wish I, I wish I kind of. I kind of want to tell you some of the reasonings that Sony gave because you would you'd have a fucking field day with them. I don't want to be here. For I know that we're just that's shitting the, on Sony's horrible ability to defend themselves. That's the problem because it's so it's worse than you can probably think of. Like the only thing that you could have wrote <laughs> worse in there uh. was, oh, it turns out that in Lin Tao and Hideki Nishino's email inbox were two emails. From Activision Blizzard offering themselves for twenty million dollars, and they said, "No, we're good." <laughs> That's the only thing that would have been worse. Is hey or twenty billion? What what is the deal? So Whatever, feeding like, feeding that into your whole been... like double bluff. <laughs> oh God! No. The reason they gave for not wanting to include them that Sony wanted them excluded was because the majority of their records were in Japanese, <laughs> and they didn't want to translate them. <laughs> It's like, is it not? Is it like the majority of your company Japanese? I just love it. And then, then they're specifically like, "Hey, can we not include the in-house antitrust <laughs> lawyer?" <laughs> they were like, "Oh, he's an external counsel. He doesn't count. He's in-house antitrust." Uh, which is, aren't you suing me for antitrust? Yeah, I want him here. In the last one. They wanted to use a different definition of subpoena so that... Of the word subpoena? Yes. Oh, oh, I thought that said of the subpoena, as in like they were changing the terms of it. They literally want to use a different definition of the word subpoena. They literally want to use a different definition of subpoena specifically to change the terms of of the subpoenas. (laughs) Your Honor, when I said bat, I meant a thing with wigs. Not baseball. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's... And as far as I'm concerned, then, Your Honor, this throws out the entire investigation. What? <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. Anyways, finally, um, according to a report from Reuters, which has spoken anonymously to three people familiar with the current state of negotiations, Microsoft's offer to license Call of Duty to other platform holders, uh, Nintendo and uh, NVIDIA, 
and whoever else. Whoever else, yeah. Um, is likely to address the European Commission's antitrust concerns. So they're thinking that the EU is going to be like, buy those motherfuckers. Yeah, because but once that happens, where they go, hey, we're not saying that you can only buy it in our store. It'd be the equivalent of you know, like Walmart. Yeah. We only have our paper towels and nobody else's. Like mm-hmm. nobody else can have yada yada. It's like no, you can buy it wherever. <laughs> we'll license it. Sure, yeah, whatever. You tell Sony to shut up now. In a weird turn of events, we have snow in Whitesboro, but you have no snow up here. Not yet. Shocking. It is. It's bizarre. Twilight Zone. Uh, I'm excited because then this might mean we don't have to talk about this for much longer. That would be entertaining, but I, I would love when they actually get into court. That actually might be like worth watching. Oh yeah, I mean that was kind of the whole uh, epic Apple thing as well, where it was like bullshit what? leading up to it, and then when they actually got into it, it was like all this juicy shit came out. It was like, just a bunch of juiciness and some of the worst finger pointing I've ever seen. Yep, and then the judge just dropping bombs all the time, being like, "You guys are fucking idiots." Like I, it's them playing the ball and cup game, <laughs> the old you know one ball three cups, and you just move them around a lot. Yeah, it's that, except. Sony is using a pile of marbles under one of the cups. Sony and is, the other um, two, and the other two cups are see through. Sony is uh, what the hell is her face from Taskmaster? Taskmaster trying to cover up the pens with potatoes. <laughs> oh, Fern Brady. <laughs> yeah. <basically. Ugh! laughs> Nobody's gonna get that reference. I love it. Mm. Uh, number two let's get away from sony to another lovely company meta is planning on at least three more virtual reality quest headsets in the next few years this is according to the verge which had access to an internal reality labs presentation which detailed meta's roadmap for ar and vr products in the presentation meta's virtual reality vp reportedly told employees that a quest 3 will be released later this year apparently it's thinner and more powerful It will also be a bit more expensive than the Quest 2 and focus on mixed reality elements. The other two headsets are a more accessible VR headset scheduled for 2024 and what's probably a Quest Pro replacement, which is years out. More headsets. Apparently there's a um, a headset being sold in Europe and Asia that's really good called the Pico. Pico! I don't know. It's a whole lot of headsets, but I still don't see the software to back them. Yeah, that's kind of the kind of where we're at. Yeah, yeah. The hardware is decent. Software is, which is really annoying. Once again, the Sony with their fucking headsets. Once again, annoying. Yep. Because uh, people are finding that um, the PSVR two headset is great, but the PS five is not quite powerful enough to like take advantage of it a hundred percent. So, I for one, I'm shocked. <laughs> shocked, I tell you. All right, number blasphemous. <laughs> number three, Forspoken developer Luminous Productions is being folded into Square Enix. The merger, which will be effective from May first, is part of a wider strategy to quote bolster the competitive prowess end quote of the firm's development studios. Luminous previously was a subsidiary of Square Enix, so now it will be an in-house studio and not a separate entity. Entity. Um, the studio said that between now and May 1st, it will remain focused on the development of Forspoken as it's currently working on a patch and DLC due to release this summer. Interesting. For where that game came out and what they're... Yeah. Yeah. I One kind of... Uh, my I kind of assume... I think if the game had been successful, they still probably would have been absorbed into Square Enix, so... Yeah, something was going on. It's my phone, but I can't remember where it is. I see it. It's behind me. I can't reach it. So, we're living our life. There it is. It's gone forever. Number four, Yasuke Masuda, the president and representative director of Square Enix, will step down from his role later this year. His replacement will be Takashi Kiru, who joined the company in 2020 of June. June 2020 specifically, believe it or not, I can read. 
as general manager for the corporate planning division at Square Enix Holdings. Square Enix said the change in leadership is, quote, intended to reshape the management team, end quote, in the face of a rapidly changing business environment. The changes need to be approved at this year's annual shareholder meetings. Takashi Kiryu. Where have I heard that last name before, huh? Kiryu? Kiryu-chan? <laughs> oh, God. Um, Wrong developer, but it would be very funny if he all of a sudden was heading up the Yakuza dev. dev. <laughs> that would be interesting. Also, uh, someone said that uh, they think that Square Enix is going to continue their whole blockchain thing that they were doing. I don't remember that. Square? Yeah. Embracer, do you own them now? Stop them. Yeah. No, you own Crystal. It's hard to keep track. Who owns Square? Whoever owns Square, stop it. I thought they got both of them. If it's you, I believe in you. Stop them. Well, they might be taking the approach of like, oh, we have so much shit now. You know, if they want to offload run them, them, if they want to run themselves in the ground, we'll just fucking sell them. Sell them now while the iron's hot. Uh, number five, Ubisoft. How do you say that? Montpellier. Montpellier. I I I don't think it's that French. You want to go more French? <laughs> yeah. Ubisoft Montpellier. Oh, I can't say that. I'm not French enough. Ubisoft Montpellier. <laughs> <laughs> the developer <laughs> The developer of Beyond Good and Evil 2 has yet another setback as its managing director. Can they claim to be the developer oh at that? God, look at that name. Can they claim to be the developer of that, by the way, at this point? I don't know. <laughs> Is it being developed? Look at that name, though. Guillaume? Yeah. Guillaume Carmona. It might be Guillaume, but... Guillaume <laughs> Carmona. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Is he Spanish? Uh, anyways, that guy, or girl, guy, I'm going to go guy, has left... <laughs> wow. They have left the studio amid labor issue allegations. The reason for Carmana's <clears throat> exit was not provided due to legal confidentiality, but it comes as the studio is under scrutiny by the Labor Inspection Services for an, quote, unprecedented number of developer burnout and sick leave. Sick leave. Uh, sources familiar with the matter have told Kotaku that dozens of staffers left the Montpellier studio last year following extended leaves of, uh, extend, extended periods of leave, excuse me, which prompted a labor inspection of the studio this past December. Not I, a good look. Yeah, I love that they they have a labor inspection service where it's like you see high turnover and they're like, what's going on over there? Let's inspect that labor. Yeah, I'm going to inspect your labor. <laughs> hey, what's your labor doing? Uh, Why is there actually nobody doing labor anymore because they all left? Huh? We got to get the guillotine out. Don't make us roll the fucking guillotine. Yummy! <laughs> Coming for you, Carmona. <laughs> Carmona's oh. a great Bond villain name. That is a good, but a like, good one. But like gold member, like Austin Powers Bond villain style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's a joke that you could raise your fist in the sky and scream Carmona. Mm -hmm. Ah, you foil this again, Carmona. <laughs> it's a great. Ah, well, that might be my new WoW character's name. There you go. If I make if I make a new if I have to get a new name on one of my characters. <laughs> if I have to make a yet another alt. Yeah, Carmona. <laughs> I'll never forgive the Japanese Carmona. <laughs> I put this curse on the Japanese. <laughs> uh, I still love that we wa watch as much of that as we did just to get to that part. <laughs> that was good. That's Shit. so good. I'm gonna bring it up. This is like four weeks in a row we've brought it up and still have no idea what that show is called. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's I don't Mike even Tyson's... know how we found like how we came across <laughs> yeah, one it. of my meme things, I think, where I just saw Mike Tyson and I was oh, like, Oh yeah, that's it's a right. cartoon. Because I'm pretty sure it's like Mike Tyson's super friends or something. Yeah. Because <laughs> Norm McDonald's a bird. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Weird, uh, every now and then I wonder if it was just a fever dream. And then I remember I didn't take any edibles. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Bandai Namco and From Software have announced that an expansion for Elden Ring called Shadow of the Erd Tree 
is currently in development. No further details were provided at this time, though fans are already speculating, no shit, that the character seen on horseback in the promotional image could be Michaela of the Helig Tree, an Empyrean demigod, and the elder twin brother of Millennia, one of the most challenging bosses in the base game. And I have no fucking idea what any of that means. Uh, someone gave me the the rough breakdown of. I wanted to be Makila, by the way. Not and, just the and cowl. so it is. I wanted <clears throat> I wanted to be a sombrero wielding. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I <Ella>? love <laughs> like basically Don Quixote. Yeah, and you just fight a giant windmill. Yeah, right. You're perfect because you're seen on horseback. Don I didn't even know that the count. Of Mikita. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that there was a giant tree in Elden Ring. Yeah, what? You didn't know that? No. There's a giant ass gold tree. I don't know if it's gold the entire time, but it's gold in a lot of parts of it. Okay. Like, yeah, I, I missed that play, at some point. A large gold tree. I missed that at some point. Some big world tree. Someone started explaining to me, it's like, oh, it's a world tree. Something about a moon crashing into a planet and there being some sort of unter- subterranean level. And at that point, I was like, this is extremely Japanese. <laughs> uh, I like I like that it's that, but it's also me just going, I don't care. Yeah. D- don't tell me the lore. Yeah. It pretty game, fun fight looking. Hmm. Not me. I, I watch and I go, wee. <laughs> no. I push button, yay. No. <laughs> I watch somebody push button and I go, yay. Uh, number seven, speaking of from software. Per some recent rumors, from software aims to release Armored Core Six in September slash October. That's wild. With a late September release being most likely. Wild again. Interestingly, it's also reported that Armored Core Six will arrive before the recently announced Elden Ring: Shadow of the Erd Tree expansion. The entire thing, believe it or not, wild to me. You think so? That it's releasing that quick, a year in, less than a year since its announcement. So I thought the same thing, but then. Uh, a uh, gentleman I work with who was a big Souls fan said this tracks with all the other games really because they released them, they announced them and then released them like within a year. Oh no, no, I don't I don't disbelieve that. Yeah. It's armored core. Yeah. When's the last one? When was five? Oh, I don't know. Exactly. Well, that was the whole thing. They've been rumored to be working on armored core for like fucking ten years. Exactly. Now. No, no. I mean it all it all adds up to Oh, yeah, less than a one year is not too crazy. Mm-hmm. To this guy, you ought to get goddamn mine. Well, I don't believe it, but I get, where, I get where you're coming from is what I'm trying to say here. I'm playing devil's advocate. Stop doing that. Okay. You can saying. do that, but you know that I'm going to come down on you as if you are on the that devil. side. <laughs> the devil's advocate. Dun, dun, dun. It's got Keanu Reeves in it, I think, right? Is that a movie? Yeah. I thought it was just Constantine. No, I'm pretty sure it's got Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino. I think that's the movie I'm thinking of. Oh, wow. They play lawyers. Oh. And there's a scene with a chick who's naked. That doesn't narrow anything down for me. I know. I know a lot of... Never mind. I'm going I'm to Google it while you're... All right. While I read about Ghost Ship Publishing on number eight. Yes. Ghost Ship Publishing, a br- new branch of deep space galactic developer Ghost Ship Games has announced the first three games that it's set to launch as a publisher. The first game is Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, a single-player spinoff from Ghost Ship Games' own Deep Rock Galactic. Created by Fun Day Games, Survivor is a top-down shooter where players must gather gems and fend off increasing waves of alien attackers and will launch as an early-access PC game later this year. I feel like I'm going to say the words Ghost Ship a lot and Deep deep Space Galactic. Yeah, probably. The second is turn-based roguelike Spell Rogue from Guidelight Games. In this single-player title, players will control a dice-slinging wizard across three acts with Ghost Ship Publishing claiming that the game is an innovative spin on the deck-building roguelike loop seen in such titles as Slide and Spire. No release date has been announced. Find your answer yet? I did. That is exactly the movie I was thinking of. Good job. And it's a Charlie Theron. Char- Charlie Theron. Charlie. Good uh, Italian job. Yeah. Well, the second one. The remake of the 
Of the yeah. The sixty. Yeah. The of third the game. Minis. What? With the minis. Well, yeah, with the minis. Yeah. Weighted down minis. They had to hide which one the gold was in. Yeah. And if they drove over so, well, why why do we why are we doing this? I don't know. What's up? Jason Statham. <laughs> just, <laughs> just name drop other people in the movie. <laughs> The third game is Bitfire Games Dark Swarm, a top-down co-op shooter that can be played with up one to four players. Dark Swarm will follow a group of mercenaries as they fight through huge swarms, hey, huge dark swarms, of aliens amid procedurally generated and destructible environments. No release date for Dark Swarm has been confirmed. So, hey, three games on their way. They got games. Two single player, one single with friends. Yeah, it kind of sounds like uh, Hell Divers. The the one definitely did. Yeah. Even though it was single player, it was like a single player top down shooter, and I was like, Hell Divers. Yes. Uh, do they was um was uh Deep Space Galactic top down? I don't remember. No. Okay. I believe it's first person. Okay. Number nine. Believe it or not. Ripley? Ubisoft may be going even harder into Assassin's Creed. According to Insider Gaming, its sources revealed that in addition to the currently announced Assassin's Creed Mirage, Codename Red, Codename Hex, and Codename Jade. Already? First off, that's four. Too many. Three more projects are currently in the conceptual and prototype phase. Codenamed Nebula, Raid, and Echoes. Each of these new Assassin's Creed titles will be developed by different studios and will have vastly different play styles from its predecessors. And you'll love this. It gets better. Also, Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming said that the series will be going back to its annual release cycle. Ugh. With major entries being significantly different from the last. Wrong. Don't let him fool you. He's so excited. He can't wait to have to look and talk about an Assassin's Creed game. Let me tell every you. Every year. Let me tell you one thing, Sonny. <laughs> if there is one person on this podcast that is qualified to talk about Assassin's Creed. <laughs> And the failures thereof is this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking smuck right here. This schmuck said back in the day when they did the whole syndicate thing and they said, we're going dark because the games aren't selling anymore. <laughs> and then, oh, let's go back to our roots. We'll call it Origins. I like that. Egypt, desert, perfect. Nailed it. You know what? While we're here, let's reinvent the wheel a little bit. New combat system. Okay, not just parry. Blah, blah, blah. A little bit more free-flowing. free, free flowing. I like it. Good idea. Man, we took a lot of development time. People really love this game. It's a really good game. Oh, a lot of good games. Nice, nice good game. You know what we're going to do with that good game? We're going to put some DLC out. People still play it. Weird. Crazy. Wow. And then, I'm going to pull the rug right out of their fucking eyes. I'm going to go, well, that Odyssey? Immediately. Immediately. We're going to do that one year later. Two year cycle? Fuck you. One year. <laughs> what do you mean that game wasn't as good? A lot of a lot of nerds really liked it. What you know you, the best what do you thing mean? that game had? No fall damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it that's weird. Wait, why don't as many people who like this one? Oh, because we just carbon Okay, we take two years. We take two we'll take it the auto, we'll take another year off. We'll figure it out. Oh Valhalla. I like that. Viking. It's interesting. It's different. We'll do that. England, good times. Less sailing because they can just kind of auto travel up and down rivers. Easy. Piece of cake. A lot of people like that. Black flag, overrated. So let's just drop it. I'm not wrong. Let's just. <laughs> That's some. The, some Assassin's Creed might come assassinate you. Bring it on. I'll play Templar. You've got, you guys only got four fingers. Listen. They drop Valhalla. Good time. Good game. Yeah. Enjoyable. Ended kind of weird. That's fair. Like, all, a lot of build up to a shit ending, frankly. Well, yeah, considering that half of the story you could 
opt out of because it was side stuff. Sure. But even like just like the specific end mm-hmm. of, a, oh, let's roll swap and do all these weird changes. Yeah. What, what the what the fuck's that? Got what? a lot of problems. Story wise. Why did I hire and fire that, that story guy in the middle of this? He had some good ideas and then you guys just fucked it all up. That's what you saw. But here's what we're going to do. I'm New York Eve Gimal. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make 95 fucking projects. Hey, we're making games here. We're going to make so many Assassin's Creed games that they don't have a choice but to not walk into one. This method is known as throwing shit at the wall. Sony knows it quite well. And secretly, it's all shit. But somebody might see something in the shit that they like. A peanut. So we're going to use humans. Instead of paying them, they're going to pay us to test the games. I like what I'm thinking. My QA department, fired. Fuck them. I need to save money because you guys aren't cheap. But I don't know why. Because you suck at your jobs. <laughs> like, kind of, It's kind of funny going into the next thing. I didn't even read it. <laughs> I'm just talking out of my ass in a fake in New York. Why am I in New York? Ubisoft is French. And I am just shitting across. Why are we making 10 Assassin's Creed's? They can't make one correct. And you're going to tell me. I can't uh, blame Tom Henderson. But you... Let's not exaggerate. It's not 10. Okay. It's seven. <laughs> okay. 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 Seven. Seven. Sorry. I jumped the gun in the double digits. I'll, I'll slow up. Let's say seven. Still two hands. Unless you lived in your church double. <laughs> yeah, but you're telling me that we're going to get the ability. And this isn't Tom's fault, so I'm not going to yell at Tom. Tom's okay. But you're telling me that they're going to be different year to year? Because <laughs> uh. you and I both know <laughs> that Origins to Odyssey was the same fucking game. <laughs> I mean, if we're honest, Valhalla's not that much different either. No, it's not. <laughs> if we're being completely honest. But it was it was enough time between the two to cleanse a palate. They put enough coats of paint over it to where it's like, that ah, looks different enough. Yeah, like they didn't literally just pop out the engine to oh. just redraw characters and draw them back in. <laughs> Take the spears out, give the guy axes. Good to go. It's not that hard. <laughs> Oh my god! So then we're gonna go back to yearly yearly releases. I can't even do the fucking accent correctly. And then it's gonna feel different year to year. But you know what that's really gonna mean? Year one and year three, same fucking thing. <laughs> year two and four, same fucking thing. And it's gonna get old immediately because there's no, gamers are not we got seven. <laughs> they're not idiots. You want to know how I know they're not idiots? Because they tell us every fucking time, why does it all look the same? <laughs> they're going to fuck they have eyes. How else do they play the games? They're not blind. They can see this shit. <sighs> fuck. You know what? I, never mind. I got, how, I got a, how I got are a we new idea. Feel... I got a new idea. I got a new idea. How are we going to feel? We're going to make an eighth one. No one will ever see it coming, because hear, hear me out, hear me out. We're going to make it an eighth one. It's going to be modern day. Now, that's the way. We ne- we haven't done that since three. They'll never fucking see that coming. We're going to do a modern one, and when we do the modern one, they ignore the parts in fucking in Valhalla where they go back to that's not, you don't even do anything. You wander around a cabin. Who gives a shit? We go back to modern, and you're going to wear these sweet goggles that let you see at night, and they got three dots. <laughs> They got three dots in them, and I already know the name of the fucking. It's gonna be called Assassin's Creed: Return to Sam Fisher. They gotta be perfect. They'll never see it coming. Two franchises, we merge them together, and then at the end, you find out that you're got yeah, tied to a chair in somebody's garage in Chicago, and then you get shot. Watchdogs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm just thinking <laughs> it's going to be. What am I doing? It's going to be 2030 <laughs> and we're going to be getting the seventh game. You want to know what else is going to come out in 2030, Matt? 
Beyond Good and Evil, it's Skull and Bones. No, no. Well, <laughs> Skull and Bones might be. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is not coming out in 2030. Okay. You're going to be lucky if Elder Scrolls comes out in 2030 <laughs> to rival the only game that could compete with it that year, Assassin's Creed 37. Rise of Khan. <laughs> All right. You know what, though? Wait, what's the cycle? Starfield, then Elder Scrolls is next, right? That's what they said, yeah. From that, from main Bethesda, yeah. Because they haven't talked, to, they haven't said anything about like what Fallout would potentially be. We'll we'll have here's the here's like a genuinely fucked up thing. We'll have we'll probably have Elder Scrolls by then, hopefully. We won't know anything about Fallout by then. Oh, I hate games. All right. Do you want me to do the short things? I wouldn't be surprised. Since you if... just ranted for like 20 minutes. I know. I fuck, I lost myself <laughs> in my character. And I, I don't even know what the character was. If I'm being honest. Like, I lost myself halfway through and then just doubled down and I don't know where. I blacked out. What was I talking about? Uh, the, the only thing you might have from Fallout is like 2025. They go after Starfield is officially out and whatever. And they they don't start talking immediately about DLC that they're going to add. They go, hey, we know Fallout exists. Don't worry about it. We're making something. And then it'll be the... But once Elder Scrolls comes out. <laughs> yeah. And then it'll be like, okay, so 10 more years? I don't know what we're... What I kind of hope they do, just to piss people off, is they say, oh, we're actually going to come out with Fallout and, and we're pushing Elder Scrolls back. No, you know what would be, you know be good? It would be really funny. Is if they said... Hey, you know what? We're not going to make a new Fallout. We're going to remake Fallout 1 and 2 with our best friends at Obsidian. And they come out and like handshake each other, like the bro predator shake. Yeah. And you're like, you two hate each other. This is really weird. I know you're both owned by Microsoft, but this seems like. This is awkward. This seems bad. <laughs> something. No, something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> what, are those, what, are those, what are those kids up to? What are those chickens up to? Ooh, good Wallace and Gromit. All right. Jeez, girl. Now for the short stuff. Speaking of Ubisoft, in a leaked email, if a leaked email is to be believed, Ubisoft is closing down several offices in Europe, including its Benelux studio. Which, who knows, they have like 800 studios, so whatever that is. Yeah, it doesn't narrow it down. Uh, the Wolf Among Us 2 has been pushed back to 2024 to avoid crunch and burnout among staff. Uh, but also because it's making the switch from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. Sucks because I'm looking forward to play it, but at the same time, I have no problem waiting. So do what you got to do. ESL Faceit Group has purchased esports technology firm Vindex. Vindex, not to be confused with Windex, offers gaming, <laughs> streaming, and esports analytics via its Vindex intelligence platform. It also provides content production for in-person events and tournaments. Do you think in Germany <laughs> they get confused? Honey, grab the Vindex. <laughs> they get confused a lot. Uh, as, a, this is a stupid joke. It was, but I liked it. As reported by Kotaku, EA's Baton Rouge, Louisiana office, has made its quality assurance team redundant. More than 200 QA staffers who mostly worked on Apex, Apex Legends were laid off. So if you start complaining about a Apex bug as well, there's a good idea. EA's trying to kill Apex Legends. That's basically probably what's happening. <laughs> EA's like we gave too, we gave Vince too much power after he proved himself. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Andrew. Uh, oh God, what's his name? The CEO or whatever is just like shitting his pants, knowing his oh, job's yeah. in jeopardy. Yep. Or they. Respawn is refusing to monetize Apex Legends more, so they're like, well, we'll just, we're, let's secretly kill it and make them make another game. Yeah, good luck. Let's see if you guys can save Battlefield. <laughs> oh, losers. The Crew franchise has reached 40 million players across two games, according to its creative director. That, that number is wild. It's very hard to believe. 100% inflated. That's yeah, very hard to believe. Uh, Netflix is working on a stop-motion animation Pokemon series called Pokemon Corsair. Well, you can do it. You know the word. Concierge. Good job. 
I'm I can sure. say it fine in conversation, but when I try, when you re- when I read well, yeah, it, when you look at it, it's weird. It's like my brain just is like, that's what I'm gonna say. It doesn't make Good sense. Good day. Yep. Uh, I'm actually kind of excited for that one. I saw the uh, little they like have like a promotional, yeah. and I was like, this could be really cool. Actually, yeah, that motion stuff's always awesome when done well. Yes. When it's me doing it and it's clear frame jumps, <laughs> yeah, it's not good. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy 16 has a six-month timed exclusivity window on PS5, but the game won't launch on PC after that time is up. Uh, sounds like they haven't started optimizing it for PC yet. So. That seems weird. I mean, it feels like if you were really going to complain about having exclusives. I don't know. Just, no. Yeah. No, 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 don't look over here. Don't mind me. Yep. Yeah, the, uh, I think, I don't know who it was, but someone, creative director or someone basically was like, we don't have the money or the people to to optimize it for PC while we're still working on the console version or whatever. Number eight. 10 million players have experienced endless self-inflicted frustration in SnowRunner. Matt is one of them. I am. I was also shocked by that one. Because the idea of 10 million people playing SnowRunner is just like mind blowing. It was also on Game Pass. Exactly. That's Game exactly Game why. Pass. You should give it a shot sometime. I. No. <laughs> the only way I give it a shot is if we both agree to just get high and attempt to do like one of the most the ridiculous hardest. missions. <laughs> so you want to get sitting high. In your, sitting in your living room and just going, hold on, man. I know how to fix this. You want to we get need high another and, just, tr- and just skip all the other regions and go straight to Russia. This is what you're saying. Right to Russia, but without the Russian truck. Oh, yeah. The word. And then it's With just, the starter truck. Yeah, and it just becomes you and I going, <clears throat> all right, we got this one stuck, but I have an idea. We got another one. And then <laughs> we come back the next day just to find out that we've amassed 50 trucks to crane pull each other. <laughs> we could get away with it if I can... if. I don't know how, how it works with get the Game Pass version of the game. If we can buy Epic Store game version, if it's if, oh, you, if, could, could, yeah, if you can do multiplayer, that's fine because I have I have money on that one, so it's like I can we can buy all the, the oh, dumb yeah. trucks that we'd want to buy. <laughs> but. Number nine, IO Interactive is developing an online fantasy RPG that narrows it down a lot. Sure it does. Number 10, Paradox Interactive will be announcing three new games, including the latest from City Skylines developer Colossal Order, plus four new expansions on March 6th. What the fuck? So many expansions. Well, you know, City, it's the fucking City Skylines Skylines people. EA likes money, so they are reportedly pulling fans on Dead Space 2 and 3 remake interest. God of War Ragnarok received 14 nominations for the BAFTA Games Game Awards? Games Awards? Double plural. Uh, 13 EA Sports PGA EA Sports. It's in the PGA game. Tour. Has been delayed till April 7th. Need for Speed Unbound has already already has less players than Need for Speed Heat. As if Nate didn't tell you from the beginning that, that would happen. It's a fucking port. Ah, they, they did the... It, it, that just infuriates me because it's the same thing as the Battlefield 3 to Battlefield Hop... Uh, Hardline. Hardline. Right. Yep. Uh, anyway, number 15. A canceled Doom 4 concept trailer from 2012 has leaked online. Who gives a shit? Well, you know, if you're interested. We have two good Doom games. Just play those. Uh, 16. A 14 minute long extended gameplay trailer of Dead Island 2 was released. Will that game ever make the light of day? I think it's supposed to come out soon, right? We'll see. And according to rumors, Fable is still miles away as it only entered full production recently. According to those same sources, the term Witcher-like was thrown around to describe the game. And according to this source right here, you ain't fucking seeing it. Don't get your hopes up. Why the fuck? Sorry. Like, why would... You know, what kills me is that we've had multiple Microsoft executives be like, Oh, Fable, looking real awesome. Can't wait to show you it. And then, like, it comes out... There's rumors, I'm going to call this a rumor, I guess, that it just entered full production. Because What the fuck were you doing this whole time? Every time they cancel it from the ground up. Uh, uh, that You know what? That's the probably the logical so this is this problem. This is always it entering full production. The but eighth the, time. The, yeah, exactly. Oh, we canceled that one. All right, we're going to make a new Fable game. 
Okay, we're in full production again. No, cancel it. Distract them by saying it's Witcher like. Hey, you guys like The Witcher, right? Witcher, Witcher. Witcher like. Witcher, Witcher, Witcher Fable. <laughs> Can you imagine Fable, but Witcher? What if? <laughs> Just buzzwords and gotchas. Somebody's doing the Google trend search and being like, oh, I bet Witcher trends pretty high going up to a new season. Let's say it's Witcher like. Is that even a good barometer anymore? 2015 was the last one. It shouldn't be. <laughs> That's how bad it is. That's the. Eight one year, of the best. Eight, we're comparing it to eight years ago. Yep. A game that was still buggy because horses, fucking Roach was just doing whatever the hell he wanted. On top of houses. Roach. Just doing Roach things. Roach. Anyway, it's been seven days. What have you been up to? Uh, not much. I finished, uh, finished, well, I finished the main story arc there for Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, hey. You're um, a wizard. I am a wizard. Um, it was wildly mediocre. Um, well, it's been on my to watch and drive survive as you are as well. Watching the uh ye old anime as per tradition. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Last of Us, The Mandalorian season three started. It did. Yup. I didn't hear shit about that. Uh, Weird. Wednesday, I believe, it's the first episode. Didn't hear a single thing. Um, it's a, uh, hundred percent of setup episodes. So it's just clearly set in the, the table. Great. Um, couldn't set it anymore after Book of Boba Fett, so might as well set it again. Yep. It's interesting. It's interesting because they, the recap doesn't include any of the stuff from Book of Boba Fett either. Oh, great. When it's like clearly, when clearly, if you, if you didn't watch any of the things from watch, Book of you yeah. have no fucking clue what's going Literally on. Literally when we watched the trailer for season three, I was like, wait, that none of this makes sense. Yep. Um, that's about it. I don't have anything else going on. Uh, just living, living life. Life be living. Life be living. What have you been up to? I've been, as you said, drive to survive. Drive to survive. Still catching up on a lot of fancy baseball stuff. Uh, spring training, been watching that. Tis the time. Tis, tis the time. A lot of, some pitch clock drama. Was it yesterday or today? I think it was with uh, Scherzer. Oh, uh, that was probably today. I yeah. didn't really pay attention. It, it's all going to happen. It's, you yeah. know, it's always fun to watch. He, uh, he missed the pitch clock by like, I don't know, a second, two seconds. Yeah. Then, which, you know, he play continued as per normal, uh, and it, it ensued into a double play. But then they called it back because he missed the pitch clock. Which then, the I think they were playing the Nationals, mm-hmm. proceeded to score like eight runs in a row. So like, you know that the little bit of drama, people being like, oh, pitch clock. Yeah, but the the whole thing with the pitch clock is that play never should have happened. Yeah, yeah. Like the it it sounds like the umpire was late on it. Yeah, that's essentially. Well, I think he missed it. Like. I don't know what what's the rule. So does it have to leave his hand by the time the pitch clock? How's that work? Or does he have to become set? He has to be in. His... He has to be in his motion, I believe. I wonder if he started his motion like rate right, like a second after the pitch clock, and then the play just continued. And then right, like... but the moment that that anything hits zero, the ump's supposed to just be like, nope. Yeah, and even if he finishes the pitch, you go whatever. I've already. That's the other thing too. Is it re- like is it reviewable? No, I don't believe okay. so. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be weird. Yep. But they'll they'll figure it out. They'll be okay. Yeah, there's growing pains with every new. Yeah, there's always growing pains. It's been interesting to watch. Uh, there obviously there's people that are against it. There's people that are for it. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of in the middle ground where I'm like I don't really care either way because I would I would have watched didn't matter what they were gonna do. Yeah, I don't. I it's rare for me to sit down and watch a full game. So like I don't feel I'm indifferent. Yeah, and I, there's a lot of reasons it makes sense. None that the general public really think about it, it, money reasons, yeah. you know, but there's about well, a, a lot of what, financial calculations in the background that you, you as the public, me as the public, we will never know. What got me was the people on Reddit who were making comparisons of game times and, and stuff from the games from like the 70s. Yeah. 
And that's when I was like, okay, so this is like, the games have gotten noticeably longer. Yeah. So. There was one clip, I can't remember who posted it, but they had Jose Altuve running an inside the park home run. And he he ran it five times, I think. And the amount of time it took to strike out somebody in, in X amount of pitches or whatever. Or like to finish in that bat. And it was like wild when you watch them side by side and you go. Yeah. Like, how did we get to this? Yeah. So and there's always extreme cases one way or the other. Did you you saw Wandy's strikeout? Um, no. I'm pretty sure he was called for just three fastballs from if either it was Higgy or Trevino was catching. Mm-hmm. And they're using pitch com, obviously, so there's not 25 seconds of science. It's just caught and go. And I don't know if Wandy ever shakes somebody. He's just going to throw whatever the catcher wants. Yeah. I, I think it was just three fastballs. They were playing the Pirates. And Wandy comes set and hucks it. And he was at like 16 seconds left on the clock. That's great. Ball comes back. Better doesn't even step out. Standing there. Gets it. Boom. 14 seconds gone on the clock. Or just 14 seconds left on the clock. Just hucks it in. Gets it back again. Boom. Same thing. Three pitches. 22 seconds. Back to the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like the shortest inning in history? Or no, something? it was just that one batter. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was just like that's funny. Bang, bang, bang. It'll be interesting to see, and then I'm sure there'll be. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, there's just gonna be a lot of like weird stuff about it, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be people being like, "Oh, it's gonna cause more injuries," like that type of shit as well. Yeah, but... well, there's there's already been that stuff where it's like if you're if you're going a hundred percent with much faster and less recovery time in between each time going a hundred percent, does that wear on a pitcher's arm? Do you then now shorten your pitchers to not go as long and you rotate more frequently? Like there's there there are discussions about that. You know, will some pitchers degrade faster? Will they? just be fine will yeah yeah Yeah. and i'm sure someone will inevitably figure out the yeah the hack and everyone will always you know once you actually start getting data in and seeing enough things with a large sample size from not triple a as well then yeah it'll be interesting for sure otherwise yeah game wise it's just that and wow uh then yeah that's it i don't really have anything else going on so yeah. Anything you're looking forward to other than sports stuff? Show Thank at you. the end of the month. Okay. Show. Uh, more WoW stuff just in general. I'm trying to think if there's something. I feel like there's another game coming out that I'm forgetting. The only thing Diablo's I... in June, so I'm not. I don't really count that. Are you doing the beta? No, because I think in order to get, I, I think in order to get to the first beta on the seventeenth, you have to pre-order. Yeah, and then it's open beta, and then I think it's open week. the. And I, I might play the following week, but I'm not going to play the the pre-order because I still haven't pre-ordered it. Yeah, if I pre-order it, it'll be like the two days before it comes out. And then um, the only thing I know of that I'm like going to play for sure is Star Wars, which is next month. No, what month are we in? It's in April. It's yeah, April. so we're, it's next month. I will also probably be playing that. It we'll see about PGA because I'm also intrigued by that. Uh, yeah, depending I on, depending about that on one. what if that comes out on PC and in their play thing, then that'll be the way that we play it. Because if it only comes out on consoles, and I have to, I'm not playing at that yeah, point. I'm not, I'm not spending seventy dollars on it. I agree. Um, but if it <clears throat> if that doesn't happen and then it's Star Wars for me, then I'll just hook up EA Play for a month burn through star wars and be done with it and that's probably the next thing i'm looking for is like a single player story unless i'm forgetting something yeah i don't remember there's there's too much too much useless information in my brain to remember that yeah that's fair i feel that it's just you know there's things yeah (coughs) something's a noodle You're here now. Anyway, we will see you guys in seven days. Doodle.